So as you move on to your wiring your motorcycle, you might pull out your manual and you might see a diagram that looks something like this that just makes you go cross-eyed and I don't know, it's hard to follow. There's just lines overlapping each other and you just might not know where to start. It's something you don't want. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Saturday Sportster. Easy Riders came out with a great book and it's really helpful and a nice guide and they have, they have nice wiring diagrams that are really easy to follow and even a pretty cool looking cartoony and stuff, but the wires don't they actually 3D overlap each other to make them really easy to trace from point A to point B. And so what I like to do is I like to take out and find one that matches the bike that I'm going to be using. And I'll even print it off. And then I can go and just write right on there what color wire I'm gonna be using, like black with green tracers, stuff like that. And I'll write it right on here and I'll save it in my manual for later so that I'm creating a wiring diagram specific to the motorcycle that I'm building. And I'll write all that on there, I'll sit it on the bench and it'll be a really easy guide to follow as you're wiring your motorcycle. So let's pull out our wire and we're gonna label our chart so that we know what wires go where. So since this is a vintage bike, I'm gonna be using some cloth wire and some asphalt loom. And at Lowbrow Customs, there's a huge selection of different cloth wire in 16 gauge and 12 gauge in all kinds of different colors. And you can buy it all in five, 10, 20 feet, different size loom for how many wires you're gonna be running through, just a really wide selection for wire in vintage cloth style for your vintage motorcycle. So I did wanna say that this wiring diagram does work as a really good guide, but since I'm not using some of these parts and I actually have the addition of circuit breakers, I did just draw up a quick diagram specifically for my bike. I'd, I'm no artist, it's nothing fancy, but it does help me determine how many wires that I need to run through the backbone, which can be complicated because some wires actually go to my ignition switch and then come back to power my circuit breakers. With this wiring diagram, I'm able to figure out how many wires that I need to run into the backbone to get started with wiring this bike. So the first thing I'm gonna do now that I know that I only need four wires running through my backbone to the ignition switch, I'm gonna show you a good way to clump those together and feed them from the back to the front through the wiring holes that we drilled previously. So I took my gas tank off just to because it doesn't need to be there and just don't, so I don't have to worry about scratching it because I'm gonna be working in this area. I got some welding wire and I often like to just put a little loop on it and I'm gonna use this to feed my wire through my backbone. So we're gonna stick it through the hole that I used before, that I drilled before. I'm gonna feed it along, along the back and that's what I'm gonna connect the wire to so I can pull it through. So I have my black with green tracer, my black with white tracer, I got a red with a black, and a brown with a black and white. And so I'm gonna stick those through the backbone. These are gonna come up to the key switch. And so I need to get them there. And we're gonna tape this on. this in through here. Oh, I'm a little hooked on something. Oh, is it not getting past the bung? So for some reason, I'm struggling to get four wires through this backbone, so I'm gonna try going one at a time and see what happens. So if you're trying to feed, it's easy to get the wire stuck in here and the wire stuck in there. So let's say you wanna grab it. Let's put a loop on this end loop like that. Gonna stick it in the hole. And we're gonna put a loop on this end. And then feed those together. Push this. Boom. 
Look how easy that was. And that works really well if you're trying to do any internal wiring in your handlebars. All right, I got one. One in a row. And once you hook it like that, you can just pull it out and it'll automatically hook. So far, so good. Got some wires going. I actually just realized I need to put one, two, three, four. I need a fifth wire because I didn't account for my headlight. So I need to run a fifth wire for my headlight. So I got to get two more wires through the backbone. Sweet. There we go. Got my black with my orange. Excellent. I got all my wires up here. All right, there we go. Still plenty long enough because I want that to just loop under there. I'm actually gonna maybe cut a piece of loom. Okay, so about I'll cut it there. I gotta get a better tool for this. Apparently. Some well, pull it out just a little. There we go. And that's gonna be my key, which I think looks really good. Now, where the f do all these go? And I'm gonna show you just a little fancier way to connect one of these eyelets onto the end of your wire without using this blue insulation. And this is gonna be the same for any type of connections that I make. So you'll just repeat this over the entire motorcycle wherever you make your connections. So you're just gonna strip it back. Strip your wire back. And we're actually going to, just gonna remove that blue insulation and I have a little piece of shrink tube that I cut and we're gonna slip that over the top just so we'll be able to use that later. And 
gonna take this and I'm actually gonna crimp this on. Okay, and now we're going to add a little bit of solder. And that's it, and that looks way better than one of these. And you should do all your wiring like this, it just gives you a really clean look, and soldering it, like crimping it and soldering, it'll make your wiring un indestructible. So I wanted to talk about the wiring diagram again. I showed you that you can print out one of these like cool looking chopper diagrams from the old Easy Rider books. And I often use these and just write the color wires that I used. But I understand that this might be kind of confusing to follow, say if this is your first time. If you've done this before, you might not need a diagram like this or you can follow this really simply. And so to help explain this to somebody that it might've been their first time, I drew this crazy thing, which didn't really work out and was probably just as confusing. So I wanted to kind of just try to simplify it a little bit to help you guys who maybe haven't done this before to try to make it just easier to follow and so you can clearly see the wires and where they go. And so I drew a much simpler wiring diagram that everything starts from the battery and has really simple wires with simple lines of wire routing that are really easy to follow with no overlapping and so it should really help simplify how to get from point a to point b with your wiring and it doesn't show where it's got to go in the neck but just how it's hooked up and like kind of like a family tree so everything starts at the battery and it moves down and things break off at switches and circuit breakers and stuff like that so you can see exactly just from looking at it really quickly that where each circuit breaker is and what is on each circuit breaker and how to follow it and where it routes and what it connects to. So I hope that helps and you'll be able to follow that really easy. As you look on this, we go from the battery and we have a wire straight to the voltage regulator. A lot of them run through the switch, but it's connected to the same terminal that your battery goes through. So it's a direct connection. There's no switching on or off of it. So if we run straight from the terminal right to the voltage regulator, nothing in between, it's the exact same thing and we don't have to rely on a connection anymore. It's directly hooked up. And so we're gonna run right to the 30 amp breaker from the battery and I have my uh, wire written down of what color it is. On each circuit breaker, there's the, it says it has just an abbreviation of BAT and then accessories. So the BAT is like the line coming in as if you're familiar with electrical stuff or outlets or something like this. The BAT side of the, of the circuit breaker would be the line coming in and the accessory side is like the load. So the load on the initial line coming in. And so we run that to the switch and that's the bat side because that's the power coming in and then off of that we have the ignition and the accessories which so it's running through the backbone 
and then it's going to the switch and then we have two circuits coming back, the ignition and the accessories, and they go to the circuit breakers here. And so we have two separate lines, but then since we also have the headlight is off of the accessories side, it's also got to come back through the backbone. But since we're doing this all at once, we ran that wire with the same wires going to the ignition switch, but then broke away and continued on through the backbone. So that's the part that gets confusing. But if you look at it this way, you it's just got to go from that circuit breaker to the headlight. But since we were planning ahead, we ran it through the backbone while we were doing everything else. We knew we had to have that extra wire. And so, with that being said, I think the rest of the diagram is pretty, pretty self-explanatory of how to get to where you got to go, but it's just planning on how you're going to route everything to make it nice is the difficult part. As long as you just follow a simple diagram like this and maybe even make your own, you should be able to wire this thing no problem. So now that we got the wire ran through the frame coming into the bottom of the bucket for the headlight, we're going to wire in the headlight. And this one is really simple. I've got it all apart and it doesn't have a high and low beam, it's just, it's just on or off. So this is the power coming in, is the one in the center, the white wire, and then we have the ground, and so we need to ground this, ground this light out. We're gonna ground the bucket, but I'm also gonna run a ground back to the frame so that I'm not grounding through my bearings. So I'm gonna show you a simple way to do this, adding loom, and if you didn't put a ground on your frame like I didn't do and now your bike's painted, I'm gonna show you a nice easy way and safe way to do this on a painted motorcycle without making a big mess. So let's get started. So like I said, I wanna actually ground the headlight right to the frame and we still have a little hole here from, I don't know, somebody drilled it or I'm not really sure, maybe somebody mounted a Frisco tank on this frame at some point, but we're gonna utilize this hole for the wire to come out and go right to the frame. So to figure out how far or how close I can put that hole, I'm actually going to put the eyelet on the wire first. We're gonna feed it through, and then I'm gonna uh, mask it off so I can drill and tap it safely without scratching the paint. And so we're gonna put the eyelet on. So we're going to feed the wire through the frame. The wire's coming from the headlight bucket through the frame, this big hole in the front, and then out the little hole. And we need to figure out, I want to put it in the hole so I can loop it too tight to the frame to see how, how far away or how close that eyelet needs to be. So I'm just going to stick some welding wire and I'm just going to feed it through there and that should pop out real easy. The wire, I tried to feed it through and it, it got twisted up in the frame tape it to my welding wire, and then we're just gonna pull this through. I tried to do it with just the wire, but it was like pushing a rope. Okay. So I want that to sit. Pretty much just like that. Okay, let's tape that off. I got this loop through here, and I'm using the black with the orange tracers just to match the paint. I know this is the ground, and you can use the whatever color you want if it matches your bike. Most of the time the ground is black but we're using this just for aesthetic purposes. And so I laid out where I want this hole to be. And I'm just kind of trying to keep it tight. It's just gonna be a little wire sticking out. And so that's where we're gonna put the threaded hole. And since this was easy to get in there, I'm gonna take it out so it's out of the way and I don't have to worry about nicking it. Automatic center punch. Okay, we're gonna put a 632 little bolt in there and the tap drill's a 36. So I put some masking tape on there just to try to control any type of paint chippage and stuff like that as much as possible and keep it to a minimum. And we're drilling for a 632, so I got my number 36 drill.
in this kind of spot. I'm cleaning off the chips off the drill so I can tell that I'm still, still drilling in and it's not just stuck on there. Just rubbing. There we go. All right. So now I'm just gonna tap that out to the 632. I'm just making a mess with the oil. There we go. Now it got a lot easier. All the way through. This had a this tap had a really long taper on it, so I want to make sure that I get to all the threads. I think I can just spin that out. So since we did this after this was painted and I drilled the hole, there's absolutely no paint in there, and we're gonna have a nice connection on the threads actually, and I really don't want to clean off the paint so that the like the head of the bolt or the eyelet is actually grounding on the flat surface. I, uh, I honestly should have maybe taken a little washer and welded that uh, on over this hole before it was painted so I had a nice surface to clean off so I had a really easy place to put a ground to but sometimes you overlook some things and but I think this is totally fine. It's just the ground for the headlight and it'll also be grounded to the bucket but I think this is going to work just fine just being drilled the way it is. So I'm going to put the wire back on here so we can route it in and figure out how long to cut it and actually connect it in the headlight bucket. screw that. <clears throat> there is a right color to use for your hot and ground, but since this is a chopper and we're more worried about aesthetics than what the wiring diagram is, we're just using the same color wire, the black with the orange tracers. And to tell them apart, I just have one stripped. So this is the hot wire, because I, uh, I remember where I routed this and I left, I just cut the wire that I ran for the ground. So we're gonna feed these through the loom and I just gotta, to get a, push it through the loom, I'm just gonna tape this to some welding wire to make it easy to pull it through. Okay. Okay, man. This loom reminds me of a Chinese finger trap. newspaper. So I've got the eyelet on the ground, and that's just gonna go to this little bolt I put in here for the headlight bucket. And then we're gonna attach the ground from the headlight right to this bolt. So we're able to actually unbolt everything and take this apart, and you don't have to cut your wires to get this thing apart. So to hook up the headlight, I took the hot wire, and I used a butt splice to connect 
the attached quick disconnect fitting to the hot wire just using a butt fitting and then uh, I took off the plastic and then just used some shrink wrap so it's not just this big red butt connector on there. So we're hooking up the ground and then I have the other ground disconnected from the headlight because it threads in and I'm just going to stick that on there as well and bolt that in tight so I'm not having to hold the headlight while I'm doing this so I just have to put in one screw and connect that because this can be a little tricky to try to might be easier if there was somebody else here there we go and then kind of drag the wires there we go so they're not both so they're squishing on the metal and not on the shrink wrap and you're gonna kind of hold the wires when you tighten it because they're gonna want to spin two wires we need to just attach this one to the ground side which this is the top it says top on it in and just kind of tuck all this in here nicely there we go oh this is the top Now we're just bolting the headlight back together. And this is gonna be, this thing's gonna be finished and ready to run. Well, not the bike, the headlight. That's it, we're ready to go. All done. So we're moving on to the ignition and we're going to use one of these lowbrow weatherproof crank start key switches and we don't need the crank start part of it but it is a nice switch so this is the one I wanted to use and it also works with the gas box motor mount that we're going to be using. Since there's a lot of stuff going on I wanted to show you what everything does. We won't be using all the capabilities of this switch but I just want to point out what it can do in case you want to utilize that on the bike that you're building. So I wanted to just talk to you about this because this might be a little bit confusing but it comes with this really cool card to help you figure out what everything is for your wiring diagram. So you see here, this is the battery. So this is the main power coming in, B, right there. And then this is gonna be to the magneto. If you're running a magneto bike, you can use this switch. When you turn off the switch, it actually grounds your magneto. So you have one side to here and then the ground to this side. And so when you turn this off, there's continuity between these two terminals to ground your magneto to shut off your bike. And then, so this is the switch power. This is gonna be where our ignition and the lights run. And I was planning on using a different switch when we set this up. So I actually have two wires running through the backbone where on this, since it's on the same terminal, I'm actually gonna cook both those wires up to this. So essentially I could have just had one wire and then separated the two circuits at the breaker, maybe just connecting those two breakers together with one wire since it essentially is the same line from the switch now to the circuit breakers and it won't be separated at the switch. So, and then C is gonna be like a momentary switch and that's gonna be when you actually push this in and that'll be for like a horn, honk, 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 or um, 
I'm not sure what else you can use that for, but any kind of momentary switch. But it also has, it has two momentary switches, one's for specifically for the starter. And so I wouldn't use the push button for a starter, but it would be a perfect horn. Say if you don't want to have another button somewhere, but you want to have a horn on your motorcycle. And then, like I said, the S goes to your starter relay, and that's going to be the crank start portion of the crank start portion of this key. So when you crank that, there'll be continuity there. And then I already talked about the ground part of the magneto. And then there's a really simple wiring diagram if you're going to be using the switch on, say, an electric start bike. But since we're using it on a kickstart bike, we just got the main fuse coming in to B, and that's just gonna be our line coming in. And then we're just gonna be using the A, which I believe is accessories for lights and ignition. So we're just gonna be using two terminals on this switch. So I hooked up my eyelets onto all the wires that were running through the backbone. So this is my hot from the battery, the power coming in. And then these are my lights and my lights and ignition, which I was gonna separate at the switch when we were using a different switch, but I was having trouble getting that switch to fit in this mount with the coil. I could have just added some spacers to move the coil out, but the, the body of the coil when bolted on flush with that bracket was hitting the ignition. So I switched to this ignition, and now this one doesn't have a separate terminal for the ignition and the accessories. So I actually tied these two together, and like I said, I could have just ran one wire to the circuit breakers and then had a jumper between the circuit breakers running power to both. It would have been the same thing as what I'm doing here with two wires. So these are gonna be tied together on the A. Like I said, this is the battery coming in, going to B. And then this is my lights and ignition, and I'm gonna put that on A. The green wire is gonna to go to the coil, and it's from the ignition side of the coil. So it's gonna have everything that uh, my bike needs to run on that breaker, and that's gonna to go to the coil. So let's, I'm gonna to jump to the other side of the bike and we're gonna hook all this up. So we're gonna hook up the switch and we're using the B and the A terminals, our battery accessories. And so the red is what's going to the batteries. This is our power coming in. Kind of just get the bolt, the little screw started. It's a little tricky, especially being a flathead. Go. We're going to get this kind of started and then we're going to fit it up into the bracket so we get the orientation of the wires coming in proper, like twisted so it's not like under tension or anything. There we go. And then the green wire we're just going to leave where it's at, the black with the green, because that's going to go to the coil. So have them loose and kind of see how you want the wires coming in. I actually like them coming straight, straight out the bottom. So that's, I think I can tighten this one up just a little, just to hold the wire while I take it out. Okay, so that's the orientation I'm gonna go with. And you're gonna have to put a finger on a wire as you're tightening it so it doesn't rotate. And then same with the, the hot side. Oh, okay. Make sure those are nice and tight. And I already tightened up all the other ones. You might wanna have those on there. You never know if down the road you're gonna miss, lose a screw or something, and it's nice to have extra screws just in case. You never know what's gonna happen. Don't wanna not make it home because one of your screws came out and you don't have a replacement. Okay. Oh, that goes on the, no, 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 no. That goes on first. This side. So that you don't have all these threads sticking up. That little spacer makes it basically flush with the top. Ah, that's, that's nicer. There we go. Now we're gonna hook the coil up.
Don't tighten these too tight and crack your coil. There we go. The green wire from, from the circuit breaker is real easy. It's just gonna hook up to the positive side of the coil, which if you have a Dyna-S ignition, uh, if you have a, a diagram for this, this is just the switched power. Just gonna hook that up there. And then the other side of this, we need a wire from this terminal down to the distributor. And that's how that side hooks up and that's all we'll need for the coil. So then we got the positive side hooked up. So we're gonna hook up the other side of the coil to our distributor. And so I got my lead hooked up and I'm gonna leave this long for now because I'm actually going to piggyback it onto the fuel line and run it right between the cylinders with the fuel line and just pop off to the distributor because the distributor is right underneath the carburetor where the fuel is gonna come in on the Super E that I'm running. So I think that'll be a nice way to, to connect that. So I'm just gonna attach that and I'm gonna leave this long and I'm gonna finish hooking it up after I get the carburetor on the bike with the fuel line on the bike. So I have a nice place to say like zip tie, piggyback it on the fuel line. So in the wiring diagram, I, for some reason, I just put that on as a green wire just because I was traveling right through the coil. But since it's on the bike, it seemed dumb to make that the same wire. And so I switched it to a gray. And to make it more like a, like a regular ignition, um, I guess the positive side for a Dyna S would be a white. And then this side would be the blue wire if you have a Dyna S ignition electronic ignition, but just to have them as two different wires so you know what they are and where they go. And these will be really easy to trace. You'll be able to see this entire wire going to the distributor. And so we're gonna put that in there. And you don't have to do this like me. I keep saying this. You, it'd be easy if you follow the same kind of colors as the wiring diagram, but with the cloth wires, a lot of this stuff is purely aesthetic and I know where the wires are going and following the diagram and I have it listed so it'll be easy to track down later if I forget where the wires go or can't trace them on the bike. But you sh if, if you're new to it, it might be easy for you to just follow a stock diagram and make the colors that same color. Or if you wanna just run whatever wires and so you can see them and you like the color, just make sure you write it down so you know where they go if you have any issues later, it'll make it a lot easier for you to troubleshoot.